And we are back on track. Welcome to Long Days with Giannis Pappas. A little bit of a snafu, a little bit of a Greek people time. We've been a, a little all over the place as far as the scheduling, but we're back. We're back to you on the bat channel and bat time that you are used to. Um, bat, the official bird of this decade, as Corona will be with us. And it came from a bat, a bat, a bat where when you go order that bat, you throw a little hot sauce on it. We're going to be talking a lot of Chinese stuff. So I brought some hot sauce today to put on my General So's opinions. Um, <laughs> Jared Harvin's uh, with us. Jesse Scaturo's with us. We got a lot to get to. Sean King, he, uh, he bought a show dog and returned it. And Jared, what'd you say that was? Buying a dog and selling a dog or what? Buying the dog of that breed is the white thing, but selling it back for the money is the black thing. Is he black? Is he white? He double tipped to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Jones. Alex Jones is in court right now still for this. Why do trials take so long? What? How many years is Alex Jones going to be in civil court over just reporting the truth? The truth that those Sandy Hook kids were crisis actors and this was a plot by the robot reptilian Clinton Foundation soldiers. I mean, the kid gets to the truth. Are we going to prosecute people for getting to the truth? We got a lot to talk about about Alex Jones or as this or, or as he's called in a lot of places in this country, the new Walter Cronkite. <laughs> Beyonce and Monica Lewinsky. I never thought I'd ever say those two names in the same story, but wokeness makes for strange bedfellows. They're having a woke war right now, and we're getting all into it, and Demi Lovato is still trying to be relevant. Tiger Woods, a man of principle? Okay, when it comes to his relationships, he's a man of his cock. But when it comes to where he's going to tee off... He wants to know how the human rights record of that regime is. Because, baby, he turned down a lot of money. Let me tell you right now. If somebody offered me the amount of money that was offered to Tiger Woods by the Saudi Arabians, I'll kill both of you guys. This is long days. <laughs> Let's find out what's the dollars. All right, we got a lot of fun ones today, okay? want to thank everybody first and foremost for uh, your reviews and uh, your your ratings on Apple and Spotify. A lot of shirts were sent out. You got your shirts. Some of you, you didn't give me your address. A few of you, I asked for the address. A few of them, I just let it go. It's, Dar it's Darwinism, baby. If you forget your address, what do you want me to do? I got a certain amount of shirts and I, I got a ton of requests. We still have a few left. I'll pick a few. Not everyone's going to get a shirt, but go over, leave your review and your rating at Apple or Spotify. Uh, screenshot it. Send me uh, your address and your name in the United States, and I'll send you send you the rest of these shirts. Whatever size we have, you'll get. There's a few left, and some of you will still get shirts. They're going out, and then we're done. We're done. Otherwise, even if you don't get a shirt, go rate and review it. Also, I really want to say you guys got to come over to the Fediverse. We need people to join the Fediverse at patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days, where we really, really get into it over there. Those are some of the funniest episodes of Long Days cooking. And they're over there beyond the, uh, the wall, okay, over there in Quebec, the Quebec of comedy content beyond the northern wall uh, over at Patreon. So support the show. Go get your content and your goodies and become a member of this cult. We got to start a cult. 
I got to start. We're going to make this either religious or political. I got to do something. I got to come. I got to stop being so genuine. I got to be more one dimensional. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got to be, I got to, I got to stop. I got to start hiding my flaws more like marketers do. I can't just come out and admit that I'm a cigarette that causes cancer. I got, I can't keep saying I'm an idiot. I got to say Yachty is the Greek genius, baby. I got it. You got to People who market well know how to just become very one dimensional. They put out a brand version of themselves and people fucking love it, baby. They love cigarettes. They don't even care if it's bad for you. They just want you to be one dimensional. I got to stop being so three dimensional. I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to start doing this as a cartoon to make me more one-dimensional. <laughs> we're just going to animate this, and I won't be three-dimensional anymore. It'll be one-dimensional. So go over there, and I don't want you to see any of my flaws anymore. There'll be no more tweets, just jokes. I'm doing. I'm going to follow the China model of marketing and propaganda. We're the best. The Chinese model is the best. We handled the pandemic the best. Maybe we created it, but we handled it the best. Okay? Nobody cares if we created it if you handle it well. Right? Like Jared pointed out. It's like when, you, when, you, when you're recruiting prostitutes for your harem or whatever your harem is, you know? You give them a Band-Aid. And what you emphasize is it was you that gave them the Band-Aid. You want to gloss over the fact that you're the one that punched her in the eye. <laughs> a little Stockholm Syndrome President Z's good at that The CCP They're good at that Welcome to the Cold War Gen I Gen Z Millennials Welcome to the Cold War This one is serious mm -hmm. I think we How funny is it that the Cold War was officially started. This was like the uh, opening ceremonies of the new Cold War was Nancy Pelosi and her two bombs landing in Taiwan. Yeah. Okay? That's why they were so threatened. She was coming in there with two bombs in her shirt. Reenacted. She got big-ass big fucking bombs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they sent someone a little more flat-chested, maybe there wouldn't have been military drills going on. But it was kind of like the opening ceremony. It was kind of like Nancy Pelosi and her bombs landing in Taiwan was the opening ceremony of the new Cold War. And this one is, I think, a lot scarier than the previous Cold War against Russia, which, you know, we got kind of close with Cuba, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, but Russia was kind of a paper tiger, right? I mean, Khrushchev, Khrushchev was a drunk. He was like a Russian stereotype. The guy would show him like, woof, woof, woof. he was like slobbing his words. And um, they had a pure communist system that kind of wasn't sustainable. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're, when basically this, the, the state is collecting everyone's money. There's no motivation. There's no markets. There's not a multi-pronged approach to a buildup to take over the world, which is what communism wants to do. Um, we want to do the same thing. We kind of want to take over the world for freedom and democracy. Now you got to make a choice. Dare I say a binary choice in a non-binary world. When you pull back all the way, which is what you got to do during a Cold War now, it's, hey, listen, either your team America or your team CCP Red China. That's it. There's no in between. This is a binary choice that you're going to have to make going forward. Either you're going to have to say America's the good guys or you're going to have to say China's the good guys. There's no in between. We don't got time. I don't want to hear any of that. Yeah, about the Gulf of Tonkin. Yeah, but Hunter Biden's laptop. Yeah, but Martin Luther King China's wife. Yeah, but Abraham Lincoln didn't have, uh, you know, progressive sla uh, progressive opinions about slavery. And yeah, 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 yeah. It ain't the time for that. Yeah, but also men can get pregnant. It's time for you to shut the fuck up. It's time for you to shut the fuck up because we're pulling back. We're pulling back further. We're getting into a comic book world again where we got good guys and bad guys. People who represent the rule of law democracy, 
term limits, capitalism, which is the freedom to make a couple of bucks, okay? I know you hate Elon Musk. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. You want to know why? He lives in the fucking red, white, and blue, baby. He also single-handedly pushed the auto industry past oil, okay? He also fucking gave the Ukrainians the internet. So I understand his father likes to shop for his pussy within the family. (laughs) I get it. But that's got nothing to do. He doesn't even like his son. So why are we reporting on Errol? Now, Now, granted... I'm very happy that someone did interview him because it was a very uh, entertaining interview where Errol, Errol Musk, uh, who's a complete asshole. I mean, talk about the opposite of father of the year. Just basically in his interview uh, just says, yeah, Elon Musk is a loser. I like my youngest son more. Um, He's a total loser. (laughs) I'm I'm glad that that interview's out there because it's entertaining. Um, I wonder what issues Elon has from that. You know, he's obviously emulating his father because his father's got like a hundred kids like Genghis Khan, right? His father's just his father. I think was on record as saying the only point to life is to reproduce, and I think he took it a little too far. Sort of like gender theory. He's like the gender theory of reproducing <laughs> went a little too far. <laughs> I mean, when you when you bang your own stepdaughter, you're 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 in Woody Allen territory, my friend. Okay, you're going a little too far. And obviously, Elon Musk. What does Elon Musk have? Nine kids at this point with like three, four different women or whatever. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Maybe at this point, he's bang, one of them's an AI. Who knows? But they're taking it a little too far. So obviously, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree um, because he's kind of emulating his father in that way. But there's obviously some issues here. And I, I, based on this interview, I'm going to guess that Errol and Elon Musk's uh, former model mom are not on good terms. I'm going to guess that it wasn't an amicable split mm-hmm. because she hangs out with Elon and goes to events, you know, as his date, which is hilarious because he's got like nine women he impregnated to choose from to be his date, and he just takes his mom. I mean... The man could care less about relationships. <laughs> he, he uses women as birthing machines. He might even call them birthing machine one, two. He may, he may name the women he's impregnated like he does his Teslas. Model S, Model Y, <laughs> and Model 3. <laughs> and he's got them based on affordability, too. He's like, that one was a little bit, uh, that one cost me a few more dinners. This one, I just took the Chick-fil-A and I fucked her. That's the Model 3. It's affordable for everybody. But his mom was a piece. And uh, his mom and him, uh, he, she's the, he's the apple of his mom's eye. But uh, I think he is the rotten dead co- cockroach on the floor in his dad's eye. Mm-hmm. His dad is not a fan of Elon, which was, uh, that's got to hurt a little bit, right? That's Even when you got bit. a couple billion dollars? Mm-hmm. He sounds jealous. You think he's a little jealous? Fuck yeah. He's a little competitive because he was like a big money guy, right? His son's the richest guy in the world. His son's the richest guy in the world. And here's the thing. People are trying to criticize Elon based on what his father's saying. But really, getting to know his father makes Elon look better. It's like standing next to a fat chick in a photo. (laughs) You know? You're going like, you can even be a little overweight. And you're like, oh, I'm looking at the hot one. Uh, that's an old trick women use. You know, you always notice like there'll be like beautiful chicks will always have like stud three, fishes. three, yeah, three. Uh, What'd you call them? A stud fish. Stud fish. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> I like to call them uh, special, special weight needed women. <laughs> special image enhancers. Special image enhanced women. Um, that's an old trick beautiful women use. And you know, if you put Elon Musk next to Errol. He seems like Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, Errol is, is a real old prick. He's a fucking prick. I mean, you can see it in his goddamn face. He's a prick. Okay, knocking up your 30-something-year-old stepdaughter is a prick move. He also had like a diamond mine at some point, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah, I'm sure he gave those people who worked at the mine an hour off for lunch. A South African. A South African gold mine. Yeah. I'm sure he walked in. He goes, whoa, 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 you guys are working too hard. 
<laughs> we want to we want to make sure morale here at the Errol Musk Diamond Mind is good. Yeah, let's make sure they all have dental. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't know a lot of you only had one hand. Who cut your hand off? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't approve of that. <laughs> what happened? They said you were working too slow, so they cut your hand off, or they caught you trying to steal some of the diamonds that belong to me, but they don't belong to me because I'm here raping the continent's resources, and one of these warlords cut your hand off? Wink. I didn't approve of that. Wink, wink to my overseer. <laughs> wink, wink. Can I get you guys some sun chips? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he didn't. I'm sure the company wasn't run like the Huffington Post. I'm sure there wasn't standing desks in a nap room. I'm sure there wasn't a bodega cooler full of free uh, fuse energy drinks. I'm positive. Ping pong table. I'm sure there was no ping pong table. Sign up for the nap room. Oh, no. I'm sure. There was no espresso machines. There was no espresso machines. But they did kidnap your daughter if you refused to work. Yeah. Yeah, and you know he, you know he he did. He was surprised when he saw some kids walking around. He goes, "Wait a second, son, are you twelve? Hmm, how did you get a job here? You're twelve? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> Wait, this is a whole legion of minors over here, and they're seven. That can't be legal here in Cameroon. <laughs> Let me go speak to the local dictator." And find out what we can do to make sure we make your working environment a little bit more pleasant. Would you like some sun chips, son? <laughs> <laughs> How much are you getting paid? <laughs> wow, you got you got paid you got you got you got paid nothing? We're gonna fix that. How about some sun chips? How about a pack of sun chips? Are we good? Um so Elon Musk probably just seems like the greatest guy when you put him next to him. But my point is, no more of this. Now we're, we got to start looking at the world. It's time for American flags. It's time for America. It is time for America to rise up like the Phoenix out of the riot ashes of all the previous summers. <laughs> you know? Rise up out of all the aborted fetuses <laughs> like the Phoenix and fight the red giant once again. Because that is what President Z, or as I like to call him, <laughs> should we just test to see how in, in bed Google is with the CCP? <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. Look, you Winnie the Pooh looking motherfucker. If I'm not here for the next episode, <laughs> you know why. You're not allowed to call him Winnie the Pooh. And by the way, he doesn't look anything like Winnie the Pooh. No. He doesn't look anything like Winnie the Pooh. I don't, I don't understand. Nah, well, you don't see it? Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little yeah, bit. Maybe a little bit. don't like Winnie the Pooh to those Uyghur Muslims. I can tell <laughs> yeah. you that. No, yeah. no. It's not a soft colleague teddy yeah, bear. No. Well, the only reason he looks like Winnie the Pooh, I think, is a little racist, right? I mean, it's the color of Winnie the Pooh. What? Kind of color of Winnie <laughs> the Pooh. What do you mean by that? <laughs> well, I'm just, I just can't help but notice that the cartoon Winnie the Pooh is a, a goldish color. How would you say that? A, uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a little, I, maybe they have a point, right? Like, you shouldn't call me Winnie the Pooh because Winnie the Pooh is yellow. So that's a little weird. Well, you know, they do like bears in China and Winnie the Pooh, his color is yellow and red, just like the just like the flag. So there you go. Yeah. It's like the flag. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got pandas over there. Yeah. They like they always got cute cuddly pandas. And he always has his hand in a pot of honey. But yeah. in this case, the pot is filled with COVID. It's filled with COVID <laughs> that he's handing out. He's giving it to everyone and then he's saying, I solved it. Yes. Yeah. Like a pimp with his hose. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're in the Cold War, baby. This is a Cold War era. Nancy Pelosi set it off. As we speak right now, China is surrounding Taiwan. They're surrounding Taiwan. They've encroached on their airspace. Um, isn't it, isn't it indicative that like she's, uh, 
Nancy Pelosi is the new Helena Troy? She lands somewhere and it could set off something? You know? I guess uh, modern times is into is into mature mature women. Mm. What do you call that? <laughs> Grant, a MILF? She's a MILF. She's a gr- a gilf. A gilf, yeah. Yeah. A gilf, yeah. Back in the day in history, they were they were all about that. They were all about that teen porn. Helena Troy, she was probably 18 when she caused wars. Now Nancy Pelosi, she's a gilf. Soul Joel's ready to go to war. <laughs> <laughs> so China's running drills. They're not happy. They want Taiwan. As we know, we've spoke about many times. I mean, long days, this is the only podcast we've been speaking about this for the longest period of time. We were the first here. Just like with the cold open and just by uh, just also talking about Nancy Pelosi's titties. It was us first. Just so you know. Because I've heard they've been making the rounds in other podcasts. Just so you know where it all starts. I was the first one talking about those fucking big ass titties. <laughs> and also Taiwan. So she went there. She met with uh, another lady president um, and uh, of Taiwan. And to show, to show solitude, to show... Um, to show loyalty to Taiwan, we're here for you, dog. We got your back. We got your back. We know China's right here. Now, King Z, President Z, he hates Taiwan, dog. He wants it. He can't have this example of successful democracy and freedom right there on his doorstep. He's trying to prove that the China model is superior, and he can't have Taiwan people skipping around, skipping around free, with their camera phones mm-hmm. right across the water. Yeah. Can't have that. Cannot have that. So he's got to get rid of it. Got to get rid of it. Just like if, you're, if your wife or your girlfriend comes to your job and sees this a hot lady and you guys are smiling at each other, she's got she's to she's get rid of that girl. She can't have that chick around. Taiwan is that chick and that chick's got to go, which means your, your wife's going to tell you it's time for a change of career. She's getting you out of that office one way or the other. Yeah. It's time to go. Yeah. China is dough boy and Taiwan is Ricky. Exactly. Exactly. Boys, boys in the hood reference. There you go. That's what it is. Classic. Classic right there. So who is presidency? Who is presidency? By the way, first of all, Nancy Pelosi is funny. She's over there uh, like doing the opening ceremonies for the Cold War. Meanwhile, her husband, Paul Pelosi, is in traffic court. <laughs> Paul Pelosi, while she was over there, like the biggest news maybe of this century. This this could go down as some of the biggest news of this century. In history, the moment Nancy Pelosi went and visited Taiwan after the pandemic in this climate with the rise of China and all its implications, this is one of the biggest moments in the history of mankind, okay? Person kind. And can you imagine just her husband texting her from traffic court where he's getting he's getting drilled for a DWI? I would like to hear that phone call. Yeah, he's just texting her going like, hey, how's it going? She's going like, I'm a little busy right now, you fucking loser. What did you have, three Heinekens to get behind the wheel? Guess what? I'm going to represent the West. I'm going to represent freedom and democracy over in the most important and precarious outpost in the Eastern Hemisphere. What are you doing today? Well, I'm going to traffic court to deal with this DWI with my fucking lawyer who's court appointed, who hangs out on a wood bench outside and represents people who had a couple too many Heinekens when they were coming home from the poker party. I mean, talk about, we know who wears the pants suits in that relationship. She's also the one that tips him off about, What's going to go on with companies? I mean, she is the breadwinner. Before she, before they before she hung up, she probably gave him a stock tip. Yeah, before she hung up, she was like, oh, and by the way, here, let me help you again. <laughs> let me help you again. Also, you know, I'm, I took a lot of heat off of this news story because I'm going doing the biggest thing in, in this century. That's smart. For the West, Ooh. yeah. So nobody's paying attention to the fact that Paul... Look at him, too, with his mug shot. Can you imagine? That is like the height and the low of a marriage 
all in the same week, like, you know, <laughs> it would just been better. It would have been more masculine if he was at home drinking hot cocoa, waiting for a call, <laughs> watching Real Housewives. Yeah. That would have been more masculine than going to traffic court to deal with a uh, felony moving violation or he whatever is, it's called. He is her Aisha Curry. Yeah. <laughs> she was out there winning points. For the Western world, he was getting points deducted from his license. <laughs> it's a big, yeah. big gap between what the two of them are doing right now. She's out there litigating for the USA. He over here making tummy tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, that's a funny moment for the Pelosi, uh, Pelosi household. You know, their kids are going like, yeah, both my parents are busy right now. Neither one of them are home. Either one, they're doing different things. They're doing different levels of different things. <laughs> the kids call and get picked up from school. Hey, Ma, can you pick me up? Oh, no, you're in China? Okay. Hey, Dad, can you pick me up? Oh, you legally can't drive anymore? <laughs> 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 Never mind. I'll just call Uber. <laughs> yeah, kids had to take an Uber on that day. Mommy was away and Daddy can't. <laughs> What's up, guys? We are brought to you by Shady Rays. I'm wearing them right now with the wood frame. They fit nice and snug, and they look cool. As I say to my daughter when she puts on sunglasses, I go, cool. And she goes, cool. So get yourself a pair of Shady Rays. They're an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair You've worn. And that is true. Me and Jesse got our pairs. They're absolutely, they feel very quality. Durable frames and extremely clear polarized lenses for outdoor activities. Check these joints out. How cool do they look? They look so cool. Now check this out. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all their eyewear. Every pair is backed by lost and broken replacements. So there you go. If you lose or break your pair, even one day more, if you lose or break your pair, they told us they will send you a brand new pair. Even on day one, that's what they're saying. So even on the first day, if you get them and you break them, they'll send you a new pair. Wow. Unbelievable. No questions asked. So wear your shady ways with confidence because they have your back long after your purchase. I love this company. They also provide 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order and have donated over 20 million in meals to date. So look good in your shades and feel good about making an impact by buying these shades. They're absolutely, the summer's here, so you know it's time to get them, guys, all right? If you don't love them, exchange them for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. To, so they'll make sure you get the ones you like. There's no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. They got you back. So go to ShadyRays.com, use the code LONGDAYS, all one word, for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself. The shades are rated five stars by over 200,000 people for a reason. 200,000 people love these things and rated them so much that they went and told people about it. So go to ShadyRays.com, promo code LONGDAYS. Get 50% off, two or more. Go get yourself a few. So it's crazy, dude. It's crazy what is going on right now. This is a, this is a shift. This marks a shift, like... Like I'm saying, there's no more of that nonsense, all right? If America doesn't unify right now for this cause, if the West doesn't unify, if NATO, the West, I mean, this is a big proxy war happening right now in Africa, in South America, in, uh, in the Eastern Hemisphere, India, Pakistan, everyone's choosing sides. This is like the NBA All-Star game and Team LeBron and Team KD are picking their squad. Yeah. Okay, you got Team Red Kami. Who do you got on that squad? You got Turkey, you got Iran, you got Pakistan, you got North Korea, you got Russia. Um, that's your options. That's your options. And then on the West, then in the West Coast... <laughs> <laughs> you got Steph, Steph st on Steph's team. You got all of NATO, all the European countries, right? Um, you got England, of course, France, Germany, uh, the U.S., Canada. You pick which one sounds good to you. 
which one do you want to go on holiday to? You know, where do you want to go? You want to go to Iran? You want to go check out? Be like, ooh, nice sand. Nice sand. Or, or do you want to go to Paris? That's what it is. There's no in between right now. When, when war starts happening, you it becomes a comic book world, and it has to be that way. It has to be that way. Okay? Enough of this America bashing right now. This is not the time for it. It's not the time for it. This is when this Cold War is not about the sins of these different cult uh, countries. All right. Just like the civil rights movement wasn't about Martin Luther King's extramarital affairs. This is about ideals. This is about ideas. It's about systems of government. It's about your view of how man should be governed and how he should live. Should he live free or should he not? And I don't want to hear that bullshit because in China, they don't live free. And they even admit it. It's not even something that's in the dark, in the shadows. King Z will admit it. Human rights is low on the agenda. For his regime. The number one thing they want is in economic, economic independence is what they're pitching. That's what they're pitching. That's what they're pitching people, right? It's like Bitcoin. You want to be rich? I got a way to make you rich. How are they doing it? Going, hey man, you're a poor country. Let me help you out. Z comes along. He goes, hey man, look at your port. It's shit. You know, but you got all these natural resources here and you got a shitty port. How about this? China will build your port and will give you a loan to pay for it. It'll boost your economy here, create a lot of jobs, get you cooking. And they go, uh, okay, but we don't have any money. And King Z goes, dog, here's a million Bitcoin. Now you got money, just pay me in Bitcoin. And he goes, oh man. King Z just made me a Bitcoin millionaire. Sure, build the port, dog. I can, Bitcoin will just keep increasing in value. I'll be able to pay you back after I ball out, you know, in my in my dictator's palace with all these hoes. I'll still have money left over. Port's built. Then President Z, like Paulie and Goodfellas, goes, fuck you, pay me. Now it's time to pay me. Problem with the bill? He can go to Paulie. Problem with the U.S., you can go to King Z. Problem with uh, needing a little bit of money, here's a little, another loan. You can go to King Z. But now, let's just pick one. Cameroon or whatever has to come up with King Z's money every month. Problem with the West, fuck you, pay me. <laughs> Problem with food, fuck you, pay me. Problem with a revolution of the people who kind of are starving while you're partying in your mansion, fuck you, pay me. Or how do you say that in Chinese? Tai da to. And if you can't, guess what? You light a match and you burn your ownership over the joint. And China says, fine, you can't pay us. Here's how we'll handle it. We'll take it over. It's ours now. We're in your country. Also, do you mind if we put a little military bash? <laughs> I think they've they've put one after they said they never would. That's the thing. When it comes to finding out who's good and who's bad, you got to really not listen to the rhetoric because the rhetoric is just to get you in the van. Right? Once you're in the van, that's when you get your titty bit off. It's called the Ted Bundy School of Action, right? So now they have a base in one country. Uh, they have uh, they put a, they started putting bases in places because their real objective is to take over the world. Their real objective is to spread communism around the world and for the whole world to live under communism with the center of this new world being in China, Beijing. That's what they want. They want the shift of power to, to go from America to China, from the West to the East. They want the system to go from freedom, democracy, and capitalism to communism, <coughs> full-blown communism. 
How did they get to this point? Well, it was a by all means necessary type of economy where they had some markets. They did whatever they needed to do to build up. Um, and they did. And now they're being a little bit more open and brash about what they want to do. Right? And that's, that's, that's thanks to President Z, who, by the way, was raised by the CCP after his father was seen as a dissident, dissident against the communists and was put in prison, probably tortured, of course tortured. And Z was put in a re-education camp, a communist re-education camp, where he had to swear his allegiance to the Communist Party, to Mao. And he was really good. And he refers to himself in some writings or whatever as a survivor. And boy, did he survive and thrive. And then he was picked to lead China because he married um, like the most famous opera singer who sang nationalist communist songs, who was like famous. He married her and that really upped his stature, you know, kind of like um, uh, who would be a famous woman who's married? Kind of like, you know, Tom Arnold to, to Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm sure there's some other examples, right? And uh, that really upped his stature and kind of made him in the people's eyes. And... He, he he is he is dedicated to Mao's vision and he is dedicated to the reunification of Taiwan. He was dedicated to the reunification of Hong Kong. That's pretty much been done. We've covered it. Hong Kong is toast. So Taiwan, this island, brother, he wants it. Can't have that successful western model right on his doorstep for his people to see he can't have that he can't have that but he wants japan he wants korea he wants the whole hemisphere to be controlled by china the way the united states has been controlling the west and the world in a lot of ways so here they come here they come and the Cold War has started. So pick a side, baby. We got no time to hear the critiques. I don't care. I don't care. Because like I said, this war is about ideals. It's not about specifically uh, America has some bad things. America does this. America. Guess what? It's all you got. It's all we got mm -hmm. is America. Fuck yeah. So it's, it's come to, it's going to be, I'm telling you, this is going to be a binary result. It's e we're either going to live under communism or we're going to live under freedom and democracy and capitalism. It's really going to, it's, that's really what's going to happen. There's no choice because that's the hand that's being forced by China. That's what they want. That's what they're going to move forward doing. And so, you know, the domino effect is back, baby. Don't call me about the Gulf of Tonkin. I could give a shit less about it. We probably did the right thing. We probably stopped those commies fucking dead in their tracks. Holy shit. This, is this podcast brought to you by the 1950s? Give me a cigarette and a cup of coffee. Can I get a cup of joe and a smoke? Let's take an ad break from our sponsors, the McCarthyism. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we're not without sin. I get it. I get it. It's going to be fun. But, you know, this is the type, this is going to start really, this and climate change are huge threats to the future. Huge, huge challenges for the generations coming. And um, China, China, China does not play above board, man. They, they, they've gotten into every country. They've been buying properties. They've been lending out loans. They've been uh, on the internet. Cyber espionage, mm. spying. They've been pumping fake news everywhere. Trying to sow discord. Trying to win the hearts and minds of politicians. They have allies in certain countries in France and other places in the parliaments who side with China, which basically means China's probably paying them somehow under the table. Um, we're, if, if we don't enter in an era where we start to value integrity because that's what China uses against us. They use our own greed against us. They got a lot of money because we paid them a lot of money to make our shit. So they got a lot of money. 
and they like to pay people off. That's why the NBA is quiet, right? They also got a lot of military might, and they're also, they play dirty. They'll make you disappear. So they got people scared. They, they're buying people off. They're everywhere. This podcast is probably going to reach nobody. It's probably down by now. So if you don't start seeing integrity make a comeback, we're in trouble because they prey on that. They prey on our, you know, TikTok. That's a Chinese invention to get all our information and to make us stupider and to get us down to an attention span of 45 seconds to a minute. And we're dancing and we're showing our tits. We're showing our ass and they're loving it. Like it's a goddamn fucking happy meal. They're loving it. So integrity has got to make a comeback. People have to start doing things on the principle of like, Hey man, who's paying me? Tiger Woods. Surprise move. If you ask me, was offered, now here's where it gets messy because Saudi Arabia is kind of on our side. So this is where it gets messy <laughs> because we, they, we get our oil from them, right? And that fucking regime where they just have public executions in the street. Ah, this is where China gets us because they point to us and they go, look at what they're doing. And they're not wrong, right? So we look the other way. Mm-hmm. We look the other way at the public executions and the human right violations and women can't drive and all that. If you got a little bit of oil, if you got that dinosaur juice, we'll look the other way, especially if you're a, an ally against our, our worst enemy, which is Iran. We'll look the other way and we will give you a, what, four or five billion dollar military military aid for your defense systems if you're Saudi Arabia, which just what the America just did. They gave Saudi Arabia another four or five billion for their defense. Now, how much do you think actually goes into their defense and how much do you think actually goes into the Prince of Saudi Arabia's pocket? Oh, all of it. They treat that money like Salvation Army treats donations. (laughs) Biden administration approves multi-billion dollar arms sale to Saudi Arabia. Oh, and I forgot the United Arab Emigrants. Whatever country that was that the, the West carved out as a place where we could safely buy their oil cheap from them and they can uh, they could get rich while their people have their land raped to their natural resource and work for nothing or whatever it is. I don't know what the arrangement is, but I'm sure it's not all pretty. I'm sure it's not just a Barbie doll of a situation. Uh, the U.S. State Department, uh, they're giving uh, equipment estimated $3.5 billion. Estimated to be $3.5 billion of Patriot M104E Guidance Enhanced Missile Tactical Ballistic Missiles. Uh, the proposed sale will support... Here's the official statement from the State Department. The proposed sale will support the foreign policy goals and national security objectives of the United States by improving the security of a partner country that is a force for political stability. Can you say that with a fucking straight face? (laughs) And economic progress. Uh, Can you say that with a straight face? In the Gulf region. Hey, war makes for strange bedfellows. You ain't Iran, so you'll do. (laughs) We got to worry about Iran. It's a messy world out there, my friends. It feels like the 50s are coming back. Doesn't it feel like 50s and the 80s where it's like the the news is going to be very foreign policy heavy right now. You know, I think um, you're not going to hear much about Sean King's dog coming up (laughs) soon. Okay, that this might have been his last hurrah in the news. This is a fun story. All right, we've been dealing with uh, threat of nuclear holocaust, the Red Scare, Cold War, a lot of scary stuff with horrible implications. Impl- implications. Implications. Um, that's a combination of implications and inflammation. I like it. Inflama- implications. 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 It's a new word. It could be a new yeah, word. Because it. it's like implications, but they're negative because they cause inflammation. They're implications. It's a right. combo package. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. You dug yourself out that hole real quick, brother. Bravo. I'm adding to the lexicon. Bravo. You sh- I mean, you look like you would create words with those glasses. So bravo, dog. These look like ladies' glasses. Yeah. Jared saw those on the table, and he was like, whose glasses are these? And I was like, they're, they're mine. And he was like, did you have a lady over here? Yeah, I thought Roseanne Barr was going to be the guest on the podcast today. <laughs> 
So uh, this is a fun story, man. This is just a fun one. So what happened was um, uh, Sean King has a PAC, Public Action Committee. All right, a political action committee, right? A PAC. He has a PAC, right? They receive donations. That's that's what the PAC does. It's called uh, Sean King Social Justice PAC. Um, so uh, it's the Grassroots Law PAC. Um, I love how you pulled up the Washington Free Beacon for this. Because <laughs> the first sentence is with the progressive grifter. I mean, we know. I just don't like my media to say it. I just want the facts. Hey, they call it like they see it. They call it like they see it. <laughs> well, this one is, this one's impossible to see any other way because he was actually, this was actually like traced. So they found he, it, it's in all the outlets too. It's not just in the Free Beacon. I saw it everywhere. So uh, he paid roughly $40,000 to the California-based Potrero Performance Dog, Performance Dogs. That's what they're called, uh, Potrero Performance Dogs. So according to campaign finance disclosures, the payments are labeled for contractor services, making their purpose difficult to discern. But days after a $30,000, $650 payment in February, King coincidentally welcomed a new member of of the King family, an award-winning Mastiff bred by Petrero named Mars. Um, so, and King, what happens is, dog, you get every grifter or criminal-minded person, just always, greed always gets them. Mm -hmm. It's always a little too much. When do you think he should have walked away? Okay? If he would have walked away after... I think if he would have walked away, I think if he would have walked away, right, and did something else after maybe, when could he have got out? What was like a big, Tamir Rice, that was, he was a little too long because Tamir, Tamir Rice's mom dragged him. Yeah. You remember that whole thing? Yeah. Where she's like, listen, white man, <laughs> stop capitalizing off my son. She's like, we didn't have that fucking conversation, you lying white man. That's when he went a little too far. But if mm -hmm. he got out early, if he got out of like one of the first big uh, problems, right? Like one of the big like police shootings. If he had got out early. Michael Ferguson. Maybe Ferguson. Michael Brown, Michael maybe. Brown Ferguson, Somewhere yeah. back then, he just walked away and receded, right? And he said like this, look, look, I'm going to let you run it, but I'm in the back. Throw me my donation kickback. We'll keep it going, right? He would have been fine, Right. But this is the reality of this world that can get dirty. You got a good cause you're hiding behind. And who do you have behind a good cause? You got a white man pretending to be black who's stealing money. You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become you the villain. You die a hero <laughs> or you live long <laughs> enough to see yourself <laughs> become a villain. And that, with that evil ass dog, that's the dog that a villain would have. <laughs> that's the problem, Sean. You lived too long, dog. <laughs> you lived too long to see yourself. Be I mean, dude. Talk about someone who went from absolute hero to villain at Sean King. I mean, the black community has turned their back on Sean King. Yeah. They have, they have treated him the way the NYPD used to treat de Blasio. Yeah. Just turned back at funerals. So he gets this dog. Scroll down. So he gets the dog. And the thing about him, this is where he made his mistake. He makes a Facebook post with the dog. Saying he got the dog. Not thinking in the future they're going to look into how the dog was paid for at some point and make the connection that that donation of $39,650 matched up to his Facebook post of welcoming a new family member that was gotten from that specific place that bred these show dogs. Right? So he makes a Facebook post. He since deletes it. He deletes the post, of course, after. Sean King loves to delete shit. I mean, he's the king of fuck. He'll put something up and he fucking deletes it. So um, King said Mars would provide alertness and protection alongside duties as a family pet. Yeah, that's what you want as a family pet. A show dog mastiff. A $40,000 pet. I mean, who are you, dog? Mike Tyson? I mean, did you get a tiger too and some other exotic animal? I mean, who gets a $40,000 show dog for a fucking family pet? 
Um, and it appears the thoroughbred is no longer in his care. Yeah, because he did post also. We had to give him back because, uh, you know, he couldn't control him or whatever. Um, but uh, Mars was at the American Kennel Club competition earlier this month where he won best in show, which you make a little money from. So it was a nice little investment that Sean King was trying to make. I just don't think he, uh, he really thought out what it would be like to have a show dog Mastiff in the crib with his family when he's trying to write his articles and the Mastiff's trying to eat his babies. And he's like, you know what? Maybe this dog wasn't the best thing. And he gave it back. So what ended up happening? So the dog actually won best in show under, I guess, their care, right? Portrero, because he was returned to Portrero. King has denied the allegations. Let's see. Let's see. He's denied the allegations of fraud, chalking his failed projects up to poor man. Oh, that's other stuff because he's had other issues. Uh, in 2019, he said he received 4166 for a monthly salary from Real Justice Pack and no compensation at all from Action Pack, the predecessor to Grassroots Law. Kid savvy, dog. Uh, but scroll down because I want to have what happened to Mars. Oh, that's the end of that article mm -hmm. because, the, you know, the free beacon is only interested. <laughs> <laughs> They're not interested in the details. But, I mean, poor Sean King. Kid can't catch a break. Can't he just get a dog? Can't he just get a dog with de donations from black? Can't he just get a fucking dog with people's donations? No, nah, because nah, he can't. He's white. Sean King is white. Sean King's a white man. This proved to me that he's white. He's white. Do you you want to get a dog from a best in show? That's basically like dog slavery. And as a black man, you can't be with that. You know what proved to me that he was white? Mm. His white mom, his white dad, and his white brothers. Yeah. And his white birth certificate that I said mean, he was white. I mean, he wears transition <laughs> lenses, not even his glasses, know if he's black or white. <laughs> in a rambling Instagram post, I love his post when he defends himself. I like much of y'all. Remember that one? I like much of y'all. Have a messy family. You know, I have siblings I don't know about. You know, my mom told me something back in the day that she had an affair. Uh, so he had another rambling uh, face uh, Instagram post where he rallied against strict gun control laws. That's the perfect cover right now. You know, just talk about a cause people can get on board with. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just boom. Um, in New York and New Jersey, he, he rallied against it. Yes, yeah, so he, he, he supported it. And he insisted they kept him from arming himself to protect his wife. So wait, he rallied against strict gun control. Wow. Oh, he wants a gat. Wow, a kid wants a gat. Kid's a little getting a little Republican. Yeah, 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 big ass dog. You can't control him. You want now, to this is yourself. what you do, dog. You want to know Grifter fucking Hall of Fame moves right now? Mm -hmm. You want to know? There's the Kareem Skyhook and then there's the Grifter switch. From left to right. Political Euro step. It's called the old fucking Ariana Huffington, baby. Mm -hmm. She went from right to left. That's what you do. Candace Owens, liberal, was not getting much traction. You switch to right. Sean King, baby, I respect it. <laughs> now, if he goes hard right, smooth move. Because those people will support you. If you come out and you go, yeah, now you make up a thing going, yeah, I was trying to infiltrate Black Lives Matter to get into it. It's a corrupt organization. You know what? I need my guns. If we see Sean King's website the next year and he's holding two AR-15s with a picture <laughs> next to Kyle Rittenhouse, deal is done. <laughs> we may see that. Just him and Kyle Rittenhouse like this. <laughs> Just like that. Him and Kyle Rittenhouse. He's going to have a Let's Go Brandon flag. <laughs> yeah. But because he's trying to prove that he's black, the O is going to be a U. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. Um, so he claimed he had to spend that So he's basically saying I had to spend that money because of the strict gun law. I mean, the kid is really shameless. <laughs> the kid is... Yeah, you, you really? You had to get a, a $40,000 purebred show dog from a company that breeds show dogs. You wanted protection. You couldn't go. You couldn't go meet a kid named Pookie on the street and get three pit bull babies like every like everybody else does. You couldn't go get yourself a German Shepherd for twelve hundred dollars by some unscrupulous unscrupulous Amish breeder in Pennsylvania. You couldn't do that. You had to go get a forty a fucking forty thousand dollar dog, and the people who gave you the donations are just supposed to understand that that's what it costs to defend your family because you can't get a gun. Because of strict gun laws? 
which if you were who you said you were, you should support. Mm -hmm. Because I like to remind you, Sean King, you are entrenched on the left, my friend. And he's like, up until now. That'd be funny if Sean King releases a podcast. He's like, I'm sick of these fucking lips. <laughs> and then next, <laughs> next thing you know, is Sean King. Fucking Sean King on Compound Media. He's just sitting there with Anthony Camilla. <laughs> going like, I'm sick of this fucking woke shit. Freedom of speech, baby. I should be able to yell the N-word if I want. Because it's my freedom of speech. It really might be his only move. Dude, I think it's his only move. It's a smart move. Yeah. If you're a grip, that's a smart move. So many people have done it. So many people have done that switch. We're like, they're not getting traction on one side of the political aisle. And so they just switch to the other side. And they're, and they're, and those people like welcome them because they love the fact that they switched. Cause it's like proof that the other side is bad. We got them. Yeah. yeah. So Joe Rogan, I think you're going to have a new neighbor in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Sean King is headed to Austin, baby, to Republican Hollywood. <laughs> that would be fucking hilarious, man. In the statement, King insisted he spends more time each new day thinking about how to keep my family safe than I do the actual work I'm called to do. So know this. When you see reports about the money it costs to keep my family safe, it's nowhere near enough. Not at all. He's not even addressing the fact that the money was donations. He's not even addressing that because he can't. So he's doing what you call a little, what they call it, hoop de doo where he's focusing on the other stuff, his safety. His There's probably some legitimacy to that, right? People hate him. He's probably getting a few death threats or whatever, you know? It's probably true. I know they published his house. The Post published his house. That wasn't cool. That wasn't cool at all when he bought that, what was it, uh, close to a million dollar house in New Jersey? Uh, man of the people type shit. Uh, but that way, it was only 700 grand. That wasn't that bad either. That wasn't that bad. And it's not right that they're posting his fucking house, right? So that's not bad. But, um, hey, Sean, listen, dude, if you want a gun and you want to protect your family, you know, Texas is the place for you. You can go elk hunting with Tim Kennedy and you can hear some different perspectives about how if DeSantis doesn't win, doesn't does it win? We're gonna try to secede the state. You can hear some stuff like that. <laughs> his his critics include the mother of twelve year old police shooting victim Tamar Rice, who accused him of soliciting donations by using his son's name without. Yeah, that happened. She dragged him. And that's when she called him white man. It was very funny. She was like white man. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's how he gets his money, right? Donations. So they trace the money for this dog to the donations to his pack. And that's what they saw that the quote unquote, I guess, donation from the pack went to get this dog. So people are a little, people are critical of that because those are people's money that are going for him because he's saying this is for these causes and I'm going to do things for these causes. Yeah. Um, but if I'm him, Hey, I go, Hey man, if I need, I need to be safe to be able to do these causes. So I got the best show dog <laughs> money could buy. He's a good looking $40,000 dog right there. Mars is nice looking. It's a beautiful it's a dog. Nice dog, but he won't yeah. bite. Huh? He won't bite though. Yeah. I don't know if do they do, 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 do do dogs who win dog shows, are they, like, tough? No. I don't think he's a tough mastiff, right? If you right? want the protection, he got the Carlton Banks of dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this dog just looks tough. He yeah. is. Look, I mean, he's a mastiff, so yeah. it's a purebred tough dog for sure. Um, yeah. But I, I love the fact that he got rid of the dog, too. Yeah. Like, he even... The funny thing is, he, I, do you get your money back, or how does that work? If you return a dog? I have no idea, but you should. Yeah. I'm sure he put, if he got his money back, I'm sure he put that money right back into the pack. <laughs> he put that right back into the pack. I'm sure that didn't go for takeout that night. Just a little bit. Just skim a little <laughs> bit off for takeout for the family. I'm sure, I'm sure if we went into his seamless account, much like they saw the dog pop up on his Facebook feed uh, right after the 39000 I'm sure right when the dog went back, we'd see a $200 bill to... Uh, to Szechuan Delight Asian Fusion <laughs> <laughs> in Red Bank, New Jersey <laughs> to his Apple card because he gets cash points back. <laughs> oh, man. 
Now, I can speak about Sean King, right? Because he's a white guy. A couple yeah. years ago, I'd be on thin ice. But he's a white guy. Sean King is 100% white. He's a white man. He's a white guy. You are white. He looks a little light-skinned in that photo, though. Dude, he, I mean... It's not just because of the Boys in the Hood t-shirt no, either. Yeah, that helps, though. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't hurt. It does, no, I mean, it hurts. So, it By hurts the way, somebody. Boys I in saw, the Hood... I saw Joe DeRosa wear a Boys in the Hood t-shirt, and he looked even more whiter. Yeah. <laughs> he's, Joe DeRosa is actually Arab, you know yeah, that? And that's weird. Yeah, that's why. That's exactly Arab. why yeah. that's weird. <laughs> yeah. He was adopted, but he's, a, he's an A-Rap. Um, isn't it weird that Boys in the Hood has come up three times today? We, yeah. We, it's come up three times. You made a Boys... Uh, boys in the hood reference i was telling a story before about Four, boys in the hood yeah. and now boys in the hood is on the t-shirt three times that's got to mean something dog is that going to bring back cuba gooding jr's character to life <laughs> if it's three times comes up in a day maybe that character comes back to life no i thought you were gonna say his career that too but he got the me too oh he got me too he got me right. too remember mm-hmm. cuba gooding jr got me too he's doing jail time no i don't think so is All he right. no he just got a me too allegation that kind of killed his career mm-hmm. yeah that's all. I don't know what I don't know what it was. But he, yeah, he was inappropriately touching a woman somewhere in New York. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. What was the evidence of it? Uh, just his face. Yeah. So I don't know if I mentioned before, Tiger Woods turned down seven hundred. Did I mention that seven hundred thousand dollars from Saudi Arabia to play in that golf tournament? We got sidetracked, like we always do. But would you say seven hundred million? Oh, what did I say? Seven hundred thousand? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it was seven hundred, seven hundred to eight hundred million, dude. Dude, let's talk about this for a second. That's close to a billion dollars. That's close to a billion dollars. To what? Play in a tournament or what was it? Mm-hmm. Just a tournament? Yeah, they have like um, I don't know five or six tournaments throughout the year. Dog. They're more like exhibitions. They're not even real golf tournaments. I got two questions here if I'm a Saudi citizen. First, I'm going, why does my government have 700 to $800 million to give to a foreign golfer to compete in some uh, exhibitions while we're out here washing our feet in the street? <laughs> why? That would be my first question. My second question would be my first question. Why does my government have $700 million? Do you understand the amount of money that is? That's insane. Oh, they're throwing money around like crazy. I mean, he's got the highest, but they've been throwing money at all the um, like Masters winners and U.S. Open winners. Liz, Saudi Arabia, you're barking up the wrong tree. If you want to give blood money to certain people, start putting on comedy shows. Russell <laughs> Peters will go there four times a year. <laughs> you know just for laughs Saudi Arabia. I, you, dude you, you'll have some of those con- you, Trevor Noah will be there in a jiffy <laughs> for that money you kidding me <laughs> oh man that would be bad if we looked if, if somebody looked into where he's been touring cause he cause uh, I'm just saying cause those guys do the world yeah I know and I know for a fact if you have done some princess private shows that's a fact and Look, I'm not knocking it because, like I said in our opening, they offered me seven hundred thousand, and they said the only Million. condition we have for you performing the show is you have to kill Jared and Jesse and bring back history hyenas. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. They tell me I got to divorce my wife. I'll do it. 700 thou? Million. Bill. I know, but I'm saying 700 I'll, thou. I'll take 700 Someone thou. offered me over <laughs> to do one fucking show? Are you kidding me? They offered him 700 to 800 million dollars. Now, here's the thing. He turned it fucking down. Ladies. Ladies. Is he bad? Did we do the whole Elon Musk thing or was that before the show where we talked about what he's done for giving the internet to the Ukraine? No, you did it in the beginning. I did it in the beginning, right? Giving yeah. the internet to Ukraine, single-handedly pushing the auto industry mm-hmm. past fossil fuels and making other companies to compete with him also go green, essentially. 
right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Public enemy number one, Tiger Woods. He fucked a couple of flight attendants and Scandinavians or whatever the fuck. I don't even remember what he did because it shouldn't even be in the fucking news. It's not relevant to his golf career or to him as a person. It means he's got a dick <coughs> and it means he likes to use it. And it means there's women who, who want him to use it on them. Whether he's faithful to his wife or not, I don't give a fuck what he does. The guy's whole job is to find the hole. He does that. <laughs> that was a goodie. That was a goodie. Yeah. It was a goodie. His caddy's going, what are we playing? Nine holes today? He's going, nine plus four. <laughs> 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 he's going, what, you got four women? No, two. I'm just going in both the holes. <laughs> That was a goodie, Jared. I mean, Jared comes with some goodies. His job is to find the hole, and the kid is good at finding holes. So you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna blame him for it. So I'm I'm now supposed to read this story and go, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, Tiger Woods did something out of principle this huge. He turned down eight hundred million dollars. But you remember, he cheated on his wife. You know, he cheated on his wife, and he he bet he 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 got some. He's got some sky miles with some fucking. With some stewardess. Why couldn't I find the word stewardess? <laughs> Flight attendant. There you go. So he turned down the money because of Saudi Arabia's record. Why did he turn down the money? How funny would it be if I just did that whole rant and he turned down the money because Iran offered him $3 billion? <laughs> 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 That's what happens when you, when, you, when you have an opinion before you read the article. All right? which happens a lot on this podcast. <laughs> so what was the payment? The players who have chosen to go live and to play there, I disagree with it. I think that what they've done, they've turned their back on what has allowed them to get to this position. Okay, what does he mean by that? He's talking about the PGA Tour. Okay. Because the tour, you know, he's he's pro P so there's there's been set up this competition. Okay, so it's not really about the human rights abuses in Saudi Arabia. No. But it sounded good. <laughs> well, they're using that too. They're using Okay. Right. Okay. They're, yeah, they're using That's that. That's good. Well, the PGA Tour is if you decide to play in this live tournament, the PGA Tour is kicking you out. You can't be a part of the PGA Tour anymore. Right. So all these players that have made a choice to go play a li in live are then now not eligible to play in the PGA Tour anymore. So what Tiger is saying is that the tour has made us all Right? This is why we've... And we, now you're turning your back on them. Exactly. Does he mention anything about the public execution? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the president of the PGA, he, okay. he, he went hard. Okay. He started talking about 9-11. He started talking about... Saudi hijackers. Yeah, all that shit. Women can't drive. Yeah, he went hard. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, public executions. Right. The royal family. Right. How they mess their people up. They don't give the money to the people. You can say all that. So we're still on track. We still got the right point. He did do it. This is a principle. He's doing this out of principle. Obviously, he's a little bit principal because he's he's at the end of his career. He's not going to make seven to eight hundred million dollars in the PJ Tour. Yeah. And well, he's, he's so is his Scandinavian career. fucking <laughs> right. au pair wife, <laughs> right. who deserved every penny. <laughs> That's right. She deserved every penny of his hard-earned golf training and tournament earnings. She deserved every penny of him making history. <laughs> and then some, you couldn't get whiter than a Scandinavian babysitter who got 500 milli. What'd you get, 250 milli? <laughs> I'm sure a lot. <sighs> she was a babysitter, dog. She was an au pair. His wife was an au pair. Mm. She's the rich, is she the richest au pair on the planet Earth? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, we come from Scandinavia, we come from Germany. It's, we have no black guys. I love black guys. Yeah. I love, I love some black guys. <laughs> Tiger Woods, I fell in love with Tiger Woods. I didn't know he had millions. I just love black guys. <laughs> I didn't know he was Tiger Woods. Which is old pairs are her and Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> See, what the shit here is that the PGA didn't have to kick them out. They could have just let them play in the So the PGA, PGA Tour is doing it on principle a little bit. Kinda, I think they, you know. Yeah, see, it's wartime. Let's spin this well, the right way. That's the thing. Yeah, like, you got. You see, look, right there. I'm right there. We can't do it. You, you're too nuanced. Yeah, but they do see the PGA that holds. This is about communism and freedom. 
And Tiger Woods chose freedom over the tyranny <laughs> of terrorism and communism. Roll Tide. That's it. <laughs> Alabama football will be on ABC tomorrow. <laughs> Where our players are now able to make money off their likeness. Because it's America, baby. We do the right thing. Roll Tide. Okay, what were you saying? What's the details? So they kind of did, they kind of didn't. Well, they're using that, but they hold exhibitions in China. They have, yeah, I mean, like there's... few in North Korea. Right. I mean... Yeah, maybe a few in Pakistan. There's a... The Turkey Open. (laughs) (laughs) There's always the Turkey Open. Plus, they got multinational corporations sponsoring every weekend of a golf tournament. So, you know, there's no clean money. Yeah, there's no clean money. There's no clean money. You know, I think they see it as... Except Bitcoin. It's off the... (laughs) It's a Bitcoin, okay? Brought to you by... The chairman of the Fed, Logan Paul. <laughs> All right. So Tiger Woods did do something on principle. Yeah, yeah, but everybody has selective principle. Huh? Everybody has selective principle. It just matters what they want. Like Saudi Arabia gave him $700 million, so he'll turn it down. If you offered him 72 versions, that's a different <laughs> Tiger's story. Tiger's taking that. Tiger's taking that that's deal. That's a different story. Yeah. Seven, even if it's 72 wives, Tiger's going, wait a second. That's kind of what I was going for. Mm-hmm. I'll take that. He's going to be putting in a permanent sand dune. <laughs> right, because that's not what... Money doesn't really motivate him. Mm-mm. He likes puss, puss. Exactly. The kid likes puss, puss. So Saudi Arabia, you just gave him a bad contract. It's really what it is. Anyway, hats off to Tiger, right? For at least standing up for the PGA Tour, standing up. I'm sure the human rights violations have something to do with that. What are the players who took the money in Saudi? Oh, there's a bunch. But it's also complicated because they are our ally. So I'm breaking my own law. If you're against Iran, you're with us. I guess. I don't know. Just send me a million dollars and I'll say whatever you want. (laughs) So this is a fun story. Beyonce and Monica Lewinsky have gotten into it. Mm -hmm. Um, Famous for different reasons. Famous for different reasons. Both talented For different reasons. (laughs) But both at the center of cheating scandals. Both at the center of cheating scandals. Yes. Both at the center of cheating. Talented for different reasons. But talented nonetheless. Both famous for their mouths. Both famous for their (laughs) mouths in one way or the other. Absolutely. The fame comes from this area. (laughs) (laughs) Comes from that area. So Malika Lewinsky... Um, I, I love how she's like, oh, uh, we're supposed to feel bad. You, you suck the president's, you know what I mean? What do you want me to do? You suck the president's dick. That's how, you, I mean, what did you, what, what do you want me to do? You want me to, you know? Mm-mm. If you got found out, there's a chance you become famous for sucking the president's dick and having a trial happen and him being impeached because he said, I did not have sexual relations. And he was not lying when he said he did not have sexual relations because sticking a pussy, sticking a cigar in a girl's pussy is not considered sexual relations. That's called performance art. Yes. (laughs) That's performance art. Why the hell were you not his lawyer? (laughs) That's the best defense I heard right there. For him not lying under oath. Was that not? They should have said, wait, you lied under oath. He would have been, did I lie under oath? You asked me if I had sexual relations with that woman. Sexual relations, if this would have happened in this this era, he would have been able to redefine sexual relations the way Biden has redefined inflation. He would he would have been able to totally go, what ha happened was. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love the way Biden's, Biden and his... Um, Press secretary are just like, just not calling. What are they calling it again? Are they calling it just sort of a... Slowing economical growth. A slowing... uh, uh, Anything can be anything now. So it's not an... Inflation isn't happening, even though it's textbook. It's textbook. By the textbook definition of inflation, we have inflation. Biden and his administration are going, what happened was. (laughs) We have a slowed economic... School zone, <laughs> where we want the economy to go slow for the safety of the children. You are in a slow economic school zone. Slow it down. We're just slowing it down for the safety of the kids. If he would have, if this would have happened to Clinton in this era, 
he could have totally been like performance art. He would have been like, you asked if I had sexual relations. I did not. If you look at the details, I took a cigar. May I add a Cuban? And I put it in her pussy. Now, that is a performance art about how the Cuban Missile Crisis, <laughs> that was an allegory, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Cuba is the cigar trying to go into America, which is the pussy, okay? And I pulled it out. And I pulled it out, and I smoked it, meaning we, we beat those Cubans <laughs> with sanctions, and we also prevented a nuclear war with the Russians through our back channel negotiations with Robert Kennedy and the Russian ambassador in hotel rooms off the record on the QT, okay? Now, by back channel negotiations, I had anal sex <laughs> with Monica Lewinsky. That was an allegory for the back channel negotiations that saved this world from a nuclear holocaust. I rest my case artistic freedom, artistic expression. For the same reason when Dave Chappelle goes into a venue and lights up a cigarette, that's exactly what I did. Because that's protected under performance law. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. As long as you smoke, it could be... Yeah, a, it's part of his character yeah, piece. Yeah, yeah you're allowed guess, to smoke, yeah. and that's why Dave Chappelle always just fucking lights up. He goes, I'm on stage. It's part of my piece. It's part of my character. It's part of my play. It's part of my skit. That's what, that's what Bill Clinton could have done. So anyway, the controversy is fun, right? This is a fun controversy, right, Jared? Mm -hmm. So what do we have here? What's going on? So Beyonce just dropped a new album called Renaissance. On that album, she uses the word spaz, which as we covered, uh, Lizzo got in trouble for using that word on one of her songs. The ableist community said, hey, listen, that's offensive. That's a slur. You can't use that. The so what community? The ableist com community. Now, the ableist community... Who are the ableists? Uh, ableist community? Are they the disabled community? I believe so. But they're called ableist? Correct. You sure it's not the disabled community? The, the disabledist community? <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a grunge band that Wait. came out of Seattle. <laughs> is it? Is it does. Is it the disabled community that doesn't like the term disabled, so they've told... They've called themselves the opposite because it's wanted to be... Well, you always shoot for what you want to be. Well, that's confusing. Because ableist... Well, able... What does ableist mean? That means you're being... Insensitive to people, people who, are who are disabled. Unable to do something. Okay. So ableist. So the ableist community, the people who are uh, advocating on behalf of the people who are have a, some sort of disability. Correct. Which is now called ability. There you go. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> the, so the people who have a disability, which is an ability, mm -hmm. are were upset because of the word spaz. Spaz. In in Beyonce's song. Mm -hmm. Didn't this happen to this happen to Lizzo? Lizzo First, earlier, and it was the recovered. same word spaz? Yes, yeah, spaz. Is spaz the word hot in the streets right now? Why did the word find its way into two songs? I don't know, but I mean, spaz has been around. Spaz you know? is around. Spaz, spasm. Yo, spaz you know, out. Don't spaz you out. Go, you muscle spasm, you go, right. it's going crazy. Muscle spasm's another one. Yes. Yeah. Right. So if she put the word muscle in front of spaz, then it'd be no yeah, controversy. Then it's scientific. Like, yeah. you, you can't, can't, my foot has a foot right. spasm. Can't cancel my foot. Muscle spasm is the N-word with the A, and spasm <laughs> is the N-word with the E-R. There you go. Right. Okay, I'm trying to understand. Okay, so she did the she did the spasm word with the er mm -hmm. according to the ableist community, which is the disabled community, but they are ableist. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm following. There you go. Okay. So in all of this controversy, uh -huh. Monica Lewinsky stepped in. She said, "Okay, if she's going to change the word spaz, Beyonce, you might want to change what you said in your song on the partition, which you released in 2016." Whoa, they went back. She went back, way back. Wait. Okay. So the word spaz, she changed it. Beyonce she, she's changing it? it now. She's going to change she's it. She's going to change it now. Yes. What do they do with the old version? The, uh, they're probably just going to re-upload it. You know. Yeah, it's probably going to be on 4chan and become like a... <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's going to be on our clips page. <laughs> yeah. <it'll> be... <laughs> <laughs> or it'll find its way to the right. Well, they'll be like, hold it up as a song where the <laughs> word... See, because they create the reaction too because of how stupid this is. So then the, re the reaction goes and trolls with the word spaz and they'll probably use that Beyonce song at their little fucking Nazi rallies it's now. It's good for business. Yeah, it's just, you know, they, these two fucking factions of crazy need each other. It's like peanut butter and jelly, mm -hmm. you know? It's like cops and robbers. They kind of need each other. Okay, so she says she's going to change the word spaz. She capitulates. Yes. And then, of course, once you capitulate, they want more. 
Right? Give him an inch, you take a mile. So now that she, Monica went back? Monica steps in. She goes, hey. And what the fuck does Monica have to do with anything? There's a part in partition where she's explaining that her and her man are having sex in the back of a seat. And he goes, oh, he Monica lewinsky on my blouse. Saying that, you know, he ejaculated on my blouse. Monica Lewinsky goes, hey, you should change that. It's not accurate. It would be he Bill Clinton on my blouse since Bill Clinton is the one coming. I have nothing to do with that. Please change it. No, you Monica Lewinsky on the dress. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Because listen, there's a lot of there's a lot of girls that Bill Clinton did that to, and uh, you know you're the you're, famous you're one, the most famous one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let's be honest. That's not the first time Bill Clinton has dripped a little semen on some fucking clothes. Mm-hmm. Okay, we know that. Um, so then, what does she say, Beyonce? Beyonce has not responded, but there's been an onslaught of people. We told Monica Lewinsky, shut up. Some people told her that she's racist because every artist has done that. It backfired. Yeah, and yet you do this to a black woman. You're telling a black woman to change the lyrics. Right, because everyone makes Monica Lewinsky jokes. Comedians, yeah. artists, mm-hmm. whatever. And she's coming after Queen B. Now, who came after Queen B in the first place with the word spaz? Because usually you can't come after Queen B. We, everyone's united about fucking with Queen B. Mm-hmm. That is our royal family, Okay. That just shows you the difference, right? I mean, that's the Queen Bee, dog. So the Queen Bee capitulated, and she's going to change her spaz lyric because of the ableist community. Yes. Now, Monica Kowinski gains confidence, and she goes, let me jump in there and get a 2016 song lyric changed. Mm -hmm. And that's when Beyonce fans go, fuck you, bitch. Yeah, exactly. Fuck you, bitch. It is Monica Wincy that hoe. Meaning I stuck a cigar in your puss puss. <laughs> and so that's where we are right now. That's where we are. Oh, because this is the, sort of like a woke off. Yeah, it's a woke off. It's a woke off. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a snowball effect, but it's a woke off. This is a woke off, dog. This is uh, the same as what used to be called the Mexican standoff. This is a woke off. <laughs> it's like, who's going to win this woke war? Is it is... Monica Lewinsky, racist, or is Beyonce not like uh, not uh, unified with other women, right? Mm-hmm. Or sort of like, you know, doing the wrong thing for women, yeah. right? So that's where that's what the that's what it is. It's either a feminist issue or a race issue. Well, she is with the, you know the woman aspect. She got cheated on. She married a man that's not in her tax bracket. That's very womanish. That's very womanish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I love that this is happening between two famous women. They're both famous. Yeah, I mean. For different reasons, but they both have talent. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) One's talent's a little different than the other ones. Remember, everyone's worth the same in this new world. Okay? Monica. They have different levels of importance. They got different levels of importance, but their names are both pretty famous. Monica's Brittany Griner and Beyonce's the Russian arms dealer. (laughs) That's what it is. (laughs) 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 oh man i thought that trade was gonna go through if they offered two first round draft picks (laughs) i feel like that trade could have gone through they were just a little light on the on the prospect draft picks yeah otherwise it's a good trade it's a good trade for russia um this is a very funny story i don't know what right now it's just a detente we don't know what the solution is going to be so when does Amanda Seals come in and give a verdict? <laughs> <laughs> she's, you know, she's the one on the top of my head. I assume there's a council yeah. where her and Hari Kondabulu and a bunch of others sit on and they make a ruling on who wins this walk-off. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can't just have a tie. It's not. This isn't going to end like a soccer game, right? Zero, zero, nil, nil. Mm-mm. Somebody's got to win. Is Monica Lewinsky racist? Or is Beyonce insensitive to the feminist cause? Which one is it? Or what if they're both? We need a ruling. Who's the who's who's the top woke? Who's the top? Who's the top? Who's the most famous one? AOC. AOC. I'm sorry. I apologize. It was the first names that came to mind. I went. I went low to the ground on my <laughs> on authority. Right. You went G League. Man yeah. Seals. That would be like a neighborhood uh, watch. AOC's more like a governor, right? Or like a president. Yeah. So I apologize. Um, <laughs> so AOC, please give your ruling. <laughs> See, somebody's got to step in and give a ruling here. 
on who it should be. If you want my opinion, I think I think Monica's racist. Because why not? Let's ruin that bitch's life a little more. It'd be great if she's known as the most famous whore and racist. <laughs> I know you're not a whore. I get it. I get it. I get it. You were a young intern. You were manipulated. You had no idea what you were doing. Very no, it's not you. He was married. You didn't know. You didn't know. You didn't. I can't call her that. I, you can't. You have to have sympathy for Monica Lewinsky, who was fucking another woman's husband because of feminism. Aren't those rules funny? Aren't those rules funny? She was fucking another man's husband. And I said man, and that's accurate. Did you catch that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to correct myself because the person I'm referring to that works also <laughs> she's fucking another woman's husband but people would get mad at me for calling her a whore because of unity and feminism how funny is that when did this era start where people don't want to deal with the consequences of their action. Did she not do something wrong by fucking a, a married man? Did she not do something wrong? Or is she just a fucking, how old was she, 24? Uh, get me the fuck out of here. I was driving a car when I was 24. I was living in my mom's house on my own accord at 24. I was a full grown adult with a fucking degree. I had had jobs. I was a lifeguard every fucking year in college. I got paid. I paid taxes. And you tell me you didn't know what you were doing? You were an adult. <sighs> this infantilization. Is that a word? It is now. Yeah, I mean, was she not an adult at 24? We're supposed to believe the power dynamic fucking made her think she didn't know what she was doing? That's what women want to do. They want to fuck power. You know, the thing is, women don't give a shit about other... Uh, about, she didn't give a shit about Hillary. She was sitting in the Oval Office fucking this guy who's married to the First Lady. And she's, she's upset about her reputation. I mean, what the fuck are we doing? Ah, farted. And she's going to come at the Queen Bee about a lyric? The President's intern side piece? Is there anything I'm saying that's not right or true? No. I'm supposed to take care. I'm supposed to think about her feelings? Why was she not thinking about Hillary's feelings? Why do we have to consider everyone's feelings at all? Why is everyone a child? You made your decision and I made mine. I got to make content. You're the source of content. I don't know you. I don't hate you. But I would definitely probably also <laughs> stick a cigar in your pocket. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? She's one of the chillest girls of all time. She allowed the dude to put a cigar in there? I love cigars. I love puss puss. If I can combine those two things, <laughs> I'll marry her. I would have married her. That's the problem. The problem is I would have married her, but she didn't want to be someone who would marry her. She wanted to be fucking somebody else's husband, which is the most unfeminist thing you can do, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That's this. It's called long days for a reason, right? Anyway, and try to care about this news. We killed some Al-Qaeda terrorist. I mean, that's like if someone put on an alternative comedy show right now and said, come see this show. You'd be like, did this show happen in 2009? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this news was really like, what? They're still out there? Yeah. Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zahari killed in drone strike. Who gives a fuck. That's like seeing somebody with a Zoom. Yeah. You're going like, what? Yeah, it's like a Zoom comedy show right now. You're going like, that's over, dog. We're on to new things. It's called the Cold War. All right? We're not worried about a ragtag bunch of Islamists in the deserts that you only made important to distract us from the fact that you were over there to bolster the military industrial complex, disaster capitalism, and cheap oil. We get it. Ooh, they're on monkey bars. I'm scared. No, we're not scared anymore because there's actual real threat with a real fucking army, with real nukes, with real hate for us, and they're giving us fentanyl in order to pay us back for the opium wars that they still hold a grudge against because hell hath no fury than a commie scorned. This is long days. 
Okay, guys, we want to give a shout out to our small business shout outs. Uh, freaking cold spring water, guys. Very important now, right? You don't want that plastic that comes from China, especially this episode, should I tell you. This comes in recycled aluminum cans, stays cold because of the aluminum. It's delicious. It is delicious. It is the water company when it comes to premium water. Plastics are on the way out, guys. So go to freakincoldspringwater.com. That's freaking, no G, cold spring water, all one word, dot com. Go order a couple of cases for your office, for your house, or uh, to pour on your head. Brooklyn Cannery. Um, I'm going to email you guys right now so you can send some to the studio. Jesse's the only one who hasn't had one yet. Brooklyncannery.com. All one word, Giannis Pappas, for 15% off your order. Go get yourself these incredible low-calorie, all-natural sodas that have unbelievable flavors. Unbelievable flavor. They taste good, and they're not that bad for you. Like I said, low calories. They're great for cocktails. You want to make yourself a Moscow Mule with a ginger beer? Go right ahead. You want to drink a ginger beer? A nice, cold, crispy Brooklyn Cannery ginger beer at night is the way I watched Batman last night. So I got them in my fridge, and I love them. Amaretta, cola, uh, key lime, uh, uh, the ginger beer, the root beer, absolutely delicious. So go support Brooklyn Cannery. They're a small business out here in Brooklyn, and they're so cool. They're so chill. You know them now. Yeah, they're cool. Right? Is it a husband and wife? Husband and wife. They just came from Greece. They were like a vacation in Greece. They just got married. They're great. Great people. Matcha and Lauren. Matcha and Lauren, congratulations to you guys. We really hope my fans are buying this. Please go do it. They just released a coffee spritz, too. Go get that, too. It's really good. I had that. Coffee spritz to brooklyncannery.com. Just go order 15% off your order with Giannis Pappas, all one word, and just get a bunch delivered to your house, man. They're great, especially with football season coming up. They're just, uh, you can have a soda that's good for your stomach because it's prebiotic, Mm -hmm. and it's natural sweeteners. No, No corn syrup, no added sugar. I mean, dog, I think the ginger beer is like 22 calories. There you go. And you don't taste it. It tastes even better than regular soda. So brooklyncannery.com. Of course, Nicholas Nicola Ragusa. You want 10% off of LASIK eye surgery? Just mention my name or long days. Call 646-543-9474 or go to the website ocnyi.com and get your corrective uh, LASIK eye surgery if you're in the New York area or if not drive to New York and get it and get a discount if you're in the Northeast Corridor or hey if you're flying in make an appointment get your eyes done by Nicola Ragusa Longshore Coffee it's the coffee I drink longshorecoffee.com he's been very nice with re-upping me every couple of months I absolutely love the coffee it's what I drink so there you have it longshorecoffee.com the coffee I drink is delicious. It's uh, promo code fumes at checkout. You get 15% off. They're an absolutely amazing company. Give it up for Stephen Miller out there in Rhode Island over there. If you're in Rhode Island, he'll they do like home deliveries in Rhode Island, but yeah. they deliver anywhere in the country, right? So they'll deliver the coffees right to your house. Um, you get your single, uh, single origin coffees, your premium blends. Uh, they're a small batch coffee roastery in Providence, R.I., so go to longshorecoffee.com right now. NateLinder.com for any social media managing needs you want. Uh, you need brand awareness, better leads, online sales. Uh, Nate has your back. He helps in with home service companies, e-commerce, com- e-commerce companies, B2B companies to drive more sales at the lowest possible cost. So reach out to Nate. Tell him Long Day sent you for free consultation. NateLinder.com. Uh, Nate on Instagram, Nate underscore Linder. All right, guys, if you want to ch- uh, <laughs> cash your checks in the South Jersey or Philly area, uh, go to Chris Minetti, Minetti Financial Services in the Philly, South Jersey area, 215 750 3730. That's all. Just call Chris for a nice, clean, <laughs> pure, legal transaction between Chris Benetti and you at Benetti Financial Services. Go get your checks cashed. 
uh, free check cash it if you show proof of thalassemia minor. Kid, kid went for a joke there because Italians have it too. So if you're Italian or you're Greek and you got thalassemia minor, you'll get a free check. <laughs> Shout out to the FBI. <laughs> okay. We, uh, Aaron Leaf. Man, this website is doing great. They've changed it now. It's for the free dot art. So it's an organization dedicated to providing artists from Hawaii a place to develop their craft. They host free shows, post free music by local artists. Check out their website. Uh, once you go down to Hawaii or if you're going to Hawaii or if you love music, go just check out for the free dot art. Take a peruse and enjoy music from Hawaii. 305 PLP Media Services. These guys will do professional videography, post-production, creative services for anything, including weddings, gangbangs, orgies, corporate educational videos, EPKs, whatever it is. Hire these guys down there in the 305 South Florida, professional and discreet. These guys just want to film porn. So info at 305plp.com, or you can text or call them at 786 548 Two two seven four. Please text them. Are you up? <laughs> uh, ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. Jared out there in San Diego. If you're moving your car anywhere in the world, go get your free quote. They've been doing it since 2016. These guys are screwed in. Jared screwed in. So if did you buy a car out of state? You want to move it? Are you moving? Whatever it is, they will move your wheels. ExclusiveAutoShipping.com. It's been a long